Podcast. Today we're doing another comic book haul. So, first off, we're going to start with Batman number 103. And of course, this is the cardstock variant. storyline is all about a new villain here. His name is the Ghost Maker, I believe. And him and Bruce have some uh, shared history. So there's a bit of intrigue around that as to if he is someone we know or just someone brand new entirely. I look forward to the outcome regardless. And then this is the regular cover for that book. So it looks like the Clown Hunter fights him in this one. Because I know in the previous issue, they had a confrontation and uh, Batman came in and um, kept him from killing him, more or less. Next we have Justice League number 57. This is the variant cover here. This is the last part of the Justice League tie-in with metal. I could have sworn there was one more part. But yeah, I looked at the back and it said it concluded in metal number five. This metal event, it's been okay. A lot of big things are happening, but there's just so many things happening that it's kind of hard to remember everything that's going on. I would definitely say at this point, if you haven't picked it up yet, wait for a collected trade. Next we have Dark Knight's Another nice cardstock variant. The main thing to take away from it is the Joker who last has leveled up to a godlike status. I'm trying to remember what he calls himself. But it's um it's kind of a pun name if I remember. Uh, yeah, I'm still behind on my previous haul I posted too. Um I'm like seventeen books I still have to read before I read it this set here. So that's kind of a drawback whenever you um, buy so many books. Sometimes you get busy and it just snowballs, you know. But that's where I'm at. And then there was another cardstock variant too. I'm not sure who the artist is on this one. Almost looks like either it's supposed to be the Spectre or Imperious Lex, I'm not sure. But yeah, 
same stuff in here. Let's see if it'll show me. Um, yeah, that's the Spectre. That's what I thought. By Kale Nagu. And then the other cover. Let's see here. I believe it was Art Germ's cover. I don't know this character. It says Cull. I'm assuming that was Cull. Next we have Nightwing number 76. It'll be interesting to see if this book goes to 100 or if they'll reset it here soon. It seems like a lot of the other books, they've been uh, canceling and stuff or wrapping up. Uh oh, we see KJ Beast is back. He has kind of been a main push through all of this here. He is the reason for the wound that Dick Grayson had in his head and everything. So it's good that they're bringing it back to him. safe Thanksgiving and I got some good deals if you chose to go out and shop or maybe got some stuff online we had a pretty standard one you know obviously no gathering our state mandated no inside gatherings it was just my family plus we're all under the weather right now anyway so uh, this is Teen Titans number 47 this is the variant cover and I think this series is wrapping up too. At this point, I'm picking it up just for the continued uh, Damian Wayne aftermath. So I don't really care much for most of these characters here. Damian is the main reason I picked it up in the first place. And of course, you know, John Boy's initial issues he did on the character design. We have Harley Quinn number two. This is the White Knight Murphy verse with a nice matte cardstock cover. And yeah, you can see bits of it are shiny and not shiny. It looks like that's the Great Ghost. So, oh yeah, this is like the Mad Bomber. Harley's fighting her, her body double or whatever from the initial White Knight arc. I don't remember much about her other than she was a character, you know. But yeah, I do like this artist here. He's doing a good job at keeping things consistent. Seeing if I can find an here's a pretty nice splash here. There's one towards the, towards the end of the book, but I didn't want to um, have that be something that spoils for you, so. Side note, I have to say I am intrigued by um, Transformers Back to the Future cross. 
us over here. And it looks like that's the um, the, Del the DeLorean there. <laughs> I want to check out the one they did with the Terminator in as well. So this is Snake Eyes number three. This is the whole Rob Liefeld story. And I'm not a big G.I. Joe comic reader. But yeah, Liefeld brought me in, so... It's been interesting. I don't know a ton about the universe. And even from the cartoon, I can't recall a lot about it. You know, G.I. Joe has been like a toy staple and cartoon staple for us guys who were born in the 80s and stuff. But I was really on the younger side when G.I. Joe, as well as Transformers, was on the air. I have seen more Transformers than G.I. Joe. But I think that's just the nature of probably my protective mom when I didn't realize with like war scenes and stuff even though the show was heavily sanitized or everyone had like sci-fi laser guns and not like actual real guns, you know. But anyway, this is uh, enjoyable to look at. It's entertaining. I just don't know what the heck's going on. Next we have Spawn number 312. And I was looking on the front here. They have two versions of this. One with all the artists who worked on it. And then this is the local comic shop day variant. So I looked, I didn't see many shops that I personally been to or know. I did see Mill Creek or Mill Geek Comics. That's Comic Tom's uh, comic shop. And then I don't know about the back though. There might be more here maybe. Let's see if I can, looks like these. No, they're not alphabetical. I was hoping they were. So it might be on the back in alphabetical order, maybe. Well, it's not alphabetical, but but I'll look for that later. But yeah, I was surprised. I thought that um, it was just going to be the artist one. I thought only the uh, shops only had like one copy of this one. So I'm not really sure. But this is a send up of the, I think it was Sp Spider-Man 700 cover. I'm not recalling a lot about the current Spawn arc right now either, other than a lot of Spawns intersecting and actually interacting now, as opposed to just the main one we know. So, And then, of course, we have She Spawn here, who was introduced in issue number 300. And she's still trying to figure things out. We have Best of TMNT Donatello. So, yeah, I looked at the Raphael one I have. And I came to realize that it is literally all just collected stories from the past. So, and it tells you that too here. So, the first one is from the original Mirage Studios, which is this one here. And then we have um, the IDW stuff that follows here. This was the initial micro series here and then the last one was the later one they did where it was like the nine dollar book so if i remember i believe that this one is the one that does the tribute to jack kirby in it yes it is yeah and basically um donnie gets sucked into jack kirby's book here or rather, there's a device that sends them into this dimension. And uh, Jack Kirby's book 
anything he draws and it comes and comes to life here. Yeah, there's a gateway here. They go in it. And then, yeah, anything he draws basically ends up in that portal. So then they go in there and they do battle and stuff. So it's pretty cool. Fun little Jack Kirby tribute. Really nice that they were able to do that for him. And then, yeah, the later one is nothing I can really recall. <laughs> Just kind of one of the original IDW turtle stories. And then one of the later ones here. So, so at this point, I'm more or less collecting it just for the covers because I already have all those other stories. But it's fine. I will happily support any Turtles book. And we have Roar Shot number two. I have such difficulty pronouncing his name. I'm sure even then it's not right. I guess this is the normal cover. I don't know what the variant looked like. But yeah, this is another nice cardstock cover. So I think this story is from modern day. If I remember, I read issue one. And the big push was, hey, this guy's been dead since the 80s, so who the heck was this? So, and I think they um, determined that the guy who was in the mask was this artist here. And they're like, oh, it wasn't um, the original horror shot. It was just a, a illustrator who had gone off his rocker. I believe that's what they determined, but I could be wrong. Next, we have Action Comics number 1027. Superman family shot cardstock variant and I think this arc might be wrapping soon but I could be mistaken I feel like it's gotten a little better I have been enjoying the crap out of the regular Superman ongoing right now, though he's fighting an alien from another, I think, even universe. And he's given no explanation to why he's fighting Superman or anything, so he's just trying to make sense of everything. And, um, yeah, it's drawn just great by Ivan Reyes and everything. And it's a good story. This one is just kind of going along, you know. Looks like, I think, more or less like a final confrontation with the Red Cloud here. Which she was introduced way back when Bendis started his run. Next we have Detective Comics number 1031 with a nice Bermeo cardstock cover. I just love his cover so much. I'll do a nice little trace there for you. They're just so good. Oh yeah, 
this story is the guy who lost his eye during the Joker War. He's running for mayor. And he wants to abolish all masked crime fighters. Saying if they're masked, they're not accountable for anything. And we have to put things out in the open. Public transparency. But I think he's actually like the masked character who's kind of leading the charge in that campaign. Next we have the Multiverse Who Laughs. So this is a collection of artists and writers and everything, so this one's kind of more spread out. I will do my best to showcase each artist's work. So this story here is about Zaz. Chad Harden. I've never been able to master drawing animals at all either, so I can certainly give him props for that. Is that Beppo the Super Monkey? There's a Green Lantern story in the middle there. A green Arrow too. Oh, this one's kind of crazy looking. Assuming this is like a scarecrow story. It's called the Fear Index. And that's that. So I do want to point out in the back they have a promo for the um, upcoming special event. It's called Endless Winter. So it's a nine issue uh, event. It's going to be sprinkled throughout the DC universe. So you get to see the heroes in a lot of like winter garb and stuff. And uh, they're taking on a well known threat from the past. So. And then here is the checklist for it. So if you're interested in that, check out those books. And then I think some of the covers link up to that image, maybe. Oh, and then there's a Batman Black and White, a new volume of that is going. I usually try to get this in the collected anthology, but that's this is coming starting in uh, December as well. A lot of big names there. And then this is a cardstock cover, too. And we got this uh, nice little freebie 
for the start of the new year, the future state event. So one thing I'm glad about this, it's just going to go on for a few months. It's not going to be like a year-long takeover or anything like that. It's a kind of a what-if story of sorts, and it's just going to be for a few months. So even if you don't care for the direction of some of these things, uh, everything is still fine with the normal continuity. This is just a big way, way into the future what-if scenario. And I don't know, I might do a later video to go into more detail with it, but this is pretty cool. It shows like all the concept work here, and it's pretty neat. Text heavy. It shows some of the uh, artists and writers here working on it. Superman looks really rugged there. Some sort of slave incident has happened here, I believe, with all the chains and stuff. Totally different Wonder Woman. I know some people are up in arms about that. Um. I think this is still Bruce Wayne, but then I believe uh, Lucius's son takes over as Batman. That was supposed to be what was going to happen in the regular ongoing, and then they changed it. So, And then there's some more character design here. Guardian as well. He looks way different. So yeah, it looked like they said that this takes place in the year 2040. And then here's some of the interior work. That's cool. I love the buildings there. So there's quite a few of them. There's a lot of different things. I'll mainly just be following the uh, Superman and Batman family books. But regardless of what you collect, should be interesting. And then there's the full-on checklist. And then the cover comes out. And there's the full roster. And then, finally, I got the um, some more of the Indigenous Peoples uh, covers here by Jeffrey Ferrege, I believe is his name. And these are all covers done in a very um, stylized Native American style, which is just great. I love it. And then I guess I can show the insides of some of the books here. But the main reason I got these was for the uh, covers. Red Skull is back in the ongoing Captain America book. So that's pretty good. I am glad that they got the um, the artist here. Is, um, boo -boo -boo. Where did they go? I blanked on them. Oh, I guess there's multiple. Artist. The previous issue was by an artist I enjoy a lot. Of. Maybe they switched it again. Oh well. Yeah, it looks like this one is Leonard Kirk. I don't know who that is. So then here's the Immortal Hulk one. This is Immortal Hulk number 40. And this was Captain America number 25.
Wars, yeah, Mortal Hulk is uh, one of my favorite Marvel books right now. I think that's Doc Samson there. Doc Sasquatch. That might be the first time he's hulked out before. I'm not 100% um, familiar with the full-on Hulk history. But I do know Doc Samson has been a big staple in his universe for sure. So the next one was one I solely bought for the cover here. This is Widowmaker's number one. Here's his Black Widow cover. So I have absolutely no idea what's going on with this at all. This character here is uh, in the, gonna be in the Black Widow movie too. Or maybe that is Black Widow. They just put her in the white suit that she's in. In the movie. But her hair is not a blonde here. This could be the Black Widow from the uh, Max universe maybe. I don't know. I don't see the red-headed Black Widow in here at all. And it looks like this book has other characters from the movie in it too, so I would assume if you like the movie, probably check out the Widowmakers series. So the final one is actually the Indigenous Voices special so this is all indigenous creators here so initially yeah i got all i pre-ordered all the covers and then this all the artists are indigenous peoples and then this is the cover artist here and i would love to see him do a full book i think that would be great switch artists here. So this is Echo, I believe. Introduced way back when in Daredevil. I'm trying to showcase all the artists. So in the back here, here's the artist. So Jeffrey Varege, he's he did the Watcher. Echo, uh, hitting back was um, written by Rebecca Roan Horse, drawn by Wesha Yacht. Alvid Tree, uh, Mirage, Multifaceted, written by Darcy Little Badger, drawn by Kyle Charles, Silver Fox, Blue Moon, written by Stephen Graham Jones, penciled by David Cutler, afterward written by Taboo and B. Earl. So I didn't quite find everyone in here. Yeah, if you want to support those guys and see what their stuff looks out looks like, check this out. And then the final thing I got was the uh, Final Fantasy poster collection here. It's got 22 removable posters. Um, this was 25 bucks, and I really can't 
not showcase all of them. I guess I can just kind of show you on the back. They cover um, multiple parts of Final Fantasy, so it's not just like the remake and the posters come out easy too. It's just like a, a peel out. But it covers the remake as well as like the previous like Advent Children and stuff. And then they have like descriptions on the back of the posters too. So nice. Yep, yeah, so showing off all this is proving. This core stuff here with like Zach in there, it's not focusing, but yeah, they've even got images with Zach in here too. they would have thrown in a few from like the original Final Fantasy 7 too that would have been cool just as a nice little nod you know but uh that's gonna do it for me I am gonna show off my comic Tom haul in a separate video uh, hopefully about um, early next week and uh, we're gonna be doing a giveaway with that too so make sure to check out that video uh, some of the items in that video we're going to do a giveaway on, so make sure to check that one out. Um, as always, let me know down below what you want to see. Like, comment, subscribe, share this thing out. And as always, you all have a super slumber. Thanks. Bye.